So welcome to Belgrade. Thank you so much. Pleasure to be here again. Our first question okay. uh, is uh, how would uh, the world look like if there was no math? Well, for me, it would be with the, being without joy. I mean, to me, mathematics, if done the right way, is poetry for the soul. So taking away some poetry from mankind just seems like a sad mistake. I think it would be a sad world. And of course, most people say, in a very practical sense, so much technology relies on mathematics, so probably technology goes down the wayside a little bit. But to me, it's more about the human spirit. I think it would be sad for the human spirit not to have mathematics in the world. So and why is that uh, that uh, all the children perceive mathematics as the most difficult, if it's so joyful? Oh so goodness. why is so, always so, the most well, difficult subject? In I will tell you, I was one of those children, I did not enjoy mathematics in school at all. In fact, I even went, ran away from mathematics when I went to university, thinking it was the most joyless, boring subject there was, there was. I turned out to be good at it, but I did not enjoy it one whit. And I think the problem is, it's so easy to teach mathematics, it's all about computation and getting answers to questions with speed and to me that's not joyful and in fact even in the 21st century it's unnecessary it's not about getting answers anymore if you want the answer to a problem you know you pull out your smartphone and use this that's what a 21st century person does and kids can see that so you know if you're learning some algorithm that you have to do with pencil and paper in a very long tedious way why I'm with the kids why however if you teach with thinking then that's a different story and I wish we would teach the joy of the thinking behind the computations rather than just the computation. Because without context, without meaning, without the, the human brain being involved in the process, it's joyless, tedious and hard. But if I'm interested, if I get curious, if I've got questions about it and it's a conversation about mathematics, then even the hard work becomes doable and you're willing to do it. So that was not my experience and that's why I became a mathematician because I want to bring it back to the next generation. But you're also involved in curriculum uh, writing? Absolutely, absolutely. So my career is somewhat strange. So I went through, I actually did fall in love with mathematics during my university years later, uh, when I realized what mathematics was really about. It was all about why questions and what if questions, not like computation and so forth. And then I was a university professor for a while. And then I decided I want to go back to teaching. Then I became a high school teacher. So I did high school teaching for a while. So now I'm very familiar with the high school curriculum, at least in the US and the university curriculum and now I do a lot of work in both arenas, both at university level and high school level. I work with curriculum, I work with teachers, I give professional development, I go give talks to students, I give demonstration classes and I come to fabulous places like Belgrade and talk about the joy of mathematics with fabulous people like Belgradians. Thank you. So, uh, so why do you love math? What is your reason? Is it because it's intuitive? Is it what is the reason? Why do I love mathematics? Well, I mean, as I said, it, to me it really is poetry to the soul. It really speaks to something that's beyond my humanness. I feel like, I feel like mathematics is transcendental. I mean, we do you know, arithmetic in base 10 because we're human. We, we, we're obsessed with the number 10 because of our fingers. But I realize math doesn't care about our humanness. We could do mathematics in Martian, base 8 maybe, or base 13. There's something more to, to mathematics than the immediate that goes beyond me being a human being. And to me, that's fascinating and exciting and thrilling. I feel like mathematics is eternal. It, it, it lasts forever. And that, that speaks to something really powerful. I feel like I'm doing something deep. I feel like I'm connected to the universe. So yes, um, it's intuitive. It's hard, it's tricky. You have to think hard, I get that. But it's also so rewarding. It's when, you, when you have those like, uh, moments of realization, you're just filled with wonder and joy and awe, awe about the universe. So who cannot be compelled by that? That's mathematics. Can you please tell us something about uh, one of your concepts or projects, Exploding Dots? What it is it all about? Oh, I'll gladly <laughs> tell you about Exploding Dots. So one of my greatest joys and challenges being a high school teacher was how could I take this curriculum that was very rigid, um, very linear, no storyline, no context, and give it the human story. So I thought long and deep at various parts of the curriculum, you know, algebra and arithmetic and geometry, and what I do is find a storyline that says, okay, what's really going on with arithmetic? And one storyline I came up with is this thing called exploding dots, which really starts at the very beginning. If we just understand how numbers work, we speak base tens, so we talk about ones and tens and hundreds and thousands. You can talk about any sorts of structure you like. And I realized if you think deeply about how we write numbers, then suddenly all those algorithms you learn in primary school, long addition, long multiplication, long division, which I was taught just to do without understanding, suddenly makes sense, you can just draw a picture, which I call the exploding dot, dots picture, because these dots move like uh, numbers in the system. Um, you can just draw a picture, and then you suddenly understand why long division works. And you can do that algorithm, if you like, 
or not do it. Just draw a picture and see what the answer is going to be to what, 276 divided by 12. And then I realised, because mathematics doesn't care about us being human, you can do it in any base. So let's do it in an algebra class for high school. Do it in base X, some unknown base. And then suddenly, all the work you do in high school algebra, all that advanced algebra, you realise is exactly the same work as you did in grade 5, just in base X rather than grade 5. So exploding dots suddenly makes that come true. But then it keeps going. And here's the wonderful thing about mathematics. The more deeply you think about something, the more and more it unfolds and unravels. So in this exploding dot story, then we just go, well, why stick with finite divisions? Why not do infinite ones? And suddenly we're in the world of calculus. And then why stop there? Why, you know, why base 10? Why base 8? Why base 2? Well, I just fractional bases or irrational number bases, and suddenly I'm in university level research work. So what I've done is I've taken this one simple kindergarten idea, how do you write numbers, and help students and help teachers think deeply and more deeply and more deeply, and you realize actually it is a story that goes from kindergarten all the way through primary school, all the way through high school, all the way through some university mathematics, even to some unsolved research problems today. So it's a, it's a truly mind-blowing story from very simple ideas, assume you know nothing, and just in an hour you can be doing really advanced mathematics with joy and pleasure and delight. So what is your experience with Belgrade audience? Do we love it's, it's really interesting to me. I feel like something special is going on here. There seems to be a hunger for true, meaningful, joyous mathematics. So every time I've come to Belgrade, the audience I've worked with have been so appreciative that I was thinking about mathematics at a much deeper level. Unlike other places, I can go to other countries and I see, okay, people will applaud politely. But there seems to be a hunger for some real understanding of joyous mathematics in Belgrade. So there's something, there's something special here. So I feel like this is a very special place. And I, and I hear that a lot of people still don't enjoy mathematics in school, so I feel like this is, there must be a funny disconnect going on. A lot of kids go through schools here and just go through the grind of mathematics. Yet, somehow, the populace as a whole has this fascination for it at the same time. So I love that little paradox. So all we need to do now is turn that fascination into something that spreads all the way across, even into the school system. And I think Serbia's got something special going on. I think you're on the cusp of something brilliant about mathematics. Okay, thank you very much. My pleasure.